Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Saturday morning to you all. Hope you guys are doing okay out there this morning. It's certainly a very sad morning. I think a lot of people, if you don't, I'll explain what happened, but a lot of people know what happened last night in Mississippi. The town of uh, Rolling Fork got pretty much um, catastrophic damage in the community. Not quite sure how big the town is, but all the pictures I'm seeing um, it's really bad. I'm sure as the sun is coming up here in southwest Mississippi that it's going to reveal uh, e even worse damage. So not just rolling forward, but this tornado moved up, moved northeast, and hit the town of Silver City, affected a couple other communities as it tracked through. And really, the saying is, all it takes is one. All it takes is one, which applies to not just weather, but other things in life, too. Um, really was... Uh, in full effect last night as you know we started to get late in the evening you were starting to think hey this might not unfold as bad as forecasted and then this tornado formed just east of the mississippi and you know did the unthinkable and uh you know it was certainly this is certainly going to at minimum be rated an ef4 tornado so first off i want to say obvious thoughts and prayers out for that situation okay genuine thoughts and prayers if you know i'm big on prayer um Oh, I think at a time in probably everybody's lives, someone would say, I'm praying for you. And then sometimes you just would forget to pray, pray and you never actually legitimately prayed. Um, <clears throat> I certainly don't do that anymore in my life, but there was times when I was younger, uh, you know, spiritually less mature, things like that, where I would just shoot off my hip and it wouldn't, uh, you know, it would just be something you say. But just remember today, you know, stop and pray for these people in Mississippi, the Deep South, um, these communities. I mean, I'm, 23 people died as of, I think it was 620 Central Time. 23 people lost their lives. Um, I'm hearing a baby died and, you know, it, it's very sad. It really, really is a very sad situation. And from the outside looking in, a lot of people will view it. Well, you know, that is very sad, but, you know, it doesn't directly impact your lives. But, you know, just... um certainly praying and um, do what you can do. And, and with that being said, you know, I'm going to be posting links to GoFundMe's on, on the account or maybe on the community page. I'll post it below the videos. I haven't seen anything yet. It's still early, but uh, I know that I'm going to try to donate something and, and I know a lot of other people will too. But if you feel it in your heart to, to do so, certainly help these people out. They need all the help they're going to, they can get. And uh, yeah, it's very, very sad morning, very sad morning for sure. So um, we're going to talk about the weather for today. We'll talk a little bit about what could happen tomorrow because unfortunately, um, severe weather could be another topic tomorrow. But I do want to mention um, kind of the track of this tornado. We'll talk about this really quick. Um, this is the Mississippi River. If you don't know where we're at, we're in the state of Mississippi. I'll zone out to kind of give you a more broad look at where we're at. This is Mississippi. This is Alabama. All this kind of green you see, that's just, you know, feedback from the radar. That's that's not um, that's not like legitimately rain falling. There might be a little rain. but um, So this is Vicksburg. I think a lot of people in the south probably are familiar. Certainly Jackson, Mississippi. This is the Mississippi River, the little squiggly line. The tornado form, I would say, probably right into here. It tracked, maybe more so right in here, but either way, it tracked right over Rolling Fork, right over it. And then I would say it tracked, um, I believe, just north of the town of Silver City. There was another area of circulation also, and then it kept going. And uh, I can't really move this without... Um, going like this, but it kept going basically from Silver City, kind of started taking a more southerly route and then crossed, I believe, just south of uh, Winona right here. Hopefully I pronounced that right. And I'm not sure what it did after that. I ended up went going to bed, but um, I mean, I put, I'm pretty sure it at minimum had about a hundred mile track to it. So it was the definition of a long lived tornado. And uh, those other areas of circulation too, I believe the town of Belzoni had tornado uh, damage, and I think this was from, honestly, think this was from another circulation that went just north of this. So, very sad situation overnight, guys. Um, it really is. It just um, it happens. It seems like at least once every spring, and here it is. It's happened, and I think this is cer certainly similar to the situation that happened in um, 
and uh, areas of um, basically this region right here, the country right here where the tornado kind of ran right through western areas of Kentucky in December of 2021. But this system's going to continue. The, the thing that kind of is unfortunate about this is the boundary is going to stall right into here. So <clears throat> you're going to have a stall boundary. That's not the best color to use. You're going to have a stall boundary right into here. So therefore, as we get into tomorrow, when the atmosphere settles, they're going to have more storms that are going to potentially form in this area. As of right now, there's a 5% risk of a tornado tomorrow. We'll talk about today first, but winter storm ongoing right here in this, this portion of the country um, where heavy wet snow is falling. We'll talk a little bit about that in this video also. So let's keep rolling. Storm Prediction Center for today, there's a marginal risk for areas of Alabama to South Carolina. There's a marginal risk from Virginia all the way up into the Buffalo, New York area, the southern tier of New York. And really, this is because you're going to have a cold core setup, <clears throat> which I questioned a couple days ago, but it looks like it's going to unfold. But by, no, by all means, today is not going to be a huge weather day, but you could have a quick spin up. Watch out in northwest Pennsylvania, the far western, uh, southwestern tip of New York State, and even northeast Ohio. So please be aware of this, okay? And there is a small risk of a tornado. Same risk as up here as a tornado down here in Georgia and South Carolina in this green area. It does include Atlanta, Columbia, the Charleston, Savannah, and basically all of central and southern Georgia. Okay, so uh, there is a damaging wind threat but and hail threat, but both at 5%. Uh, I think it got a sneeze coming. Uh, hopefully it goes away. Um, <clears throat> but today, how can these storms form? You already have a line of storms that's working their way through um, the Carolinas this morning definitely has lost their punch somewhat and will continue to lose their punch somewhat, I think. But they will blast through, you know, areas of the Carolinas, more so rain up here in Virginia. I think they will kind of begin to re rejuvenate down here in central to southern Georgia. And some storms could certainly become and hit severe limits in southern Georgia, the panhandle of Florida, and uh, really try to rejuvenate themselves. And we'll get a little bit closer for you folks down here in Georgia, southern South Carolina, the panhandle. These storms will move in, refire. So please watch out Tallahassee down here to Macon, uh, even eventually to Savannah and the coastal regions. Uh, these storms could fire, refire back up a little bit later today and uh, certainly pack a punch. And there will be a low-end tornado threat. There's a little bit of ingredients in the atmosphere still lingering from last night um it's still in place that has shifted east for storms okay just enough forcing that where you're going to have widespread storms i think in southern georgia later this afternoon so just be aware it's not going to be comparable to yesterday uh, last night but uh please be aware and then what's interesting is the boundary stalls and you can actually have another storm that might fire up um somewhere here in georgia well south of Aiken and uh augusta this could be a big uh, late evening storm, maybe here in, uh, in, in eastern sections of uh, Georgia, southern South Carolina. We'll watch. I think we're going to be dealing with a lot of stormy activity in this entire region throughout the next 36 hours, I would say. And uh, speaking of the northeast, um, moisture is moving into the northeast now. This will start out as a little bit of snow for you folks and a little bit of a wintry mix for uh, you know higher elevations in New York State. And this will move through and then some warm air will move in with a low pressure moving to your northwest. But this will be all snow for a lot of Vermont and New Hampshire. And then it'll turn into a heavy round of snow overnight tonight for Maine, where a good bit of snow could potentially fall in these regions. And it'll snow all the way through, I would say, tomorrow afternoon in May. Now, one thing I want to go back and look at is see the low pressure, see the opening sector. Enough surface heating, and when I say heating, I'm talking about temperatures like in the upper 50s, low 60s, but enough, enough surface heating, enough um, of a cold core kind of setup, instability will build into this region where you will have some storms that fire up in uh, northwest Pennsylvania into the southern tier of New York State. These could produce hail, and they could produce a quick tornado. Please be aware of this. In these areas, western New York State, as we get into the afternoon hours, do not be surprised if you start the morning off with a cold rain and then you end it with some storms. Okay, don't let this catch you off, off guard here. Uh, these might drift all the way into the Finger Lakes region. And uh, you might even get some storms all the way up into Canada. 
Okay, so stormy times this afternoon potentially in this region. Snow from this, several inches of snow is possible in northern Maine. Heavy wet snow, even some snow down here in the uh, down east areas of Maine, a few inches of snow is possible, and then these higher elevations could certainly see some snow. The south central U.S. today, um, it quiets back down for this morning, but then an area of showers could make their way, maybe some heavier rain, maybe some small hail with this, will develop in Kansas, make their way through eastern Kansas, and then eventually into Missouri a little bit later tonight. It might be cold enough for some snow up there in uh, Nebraska and Iowa, and uh, maybe some storms start to refire up again in uh, areas from far eastern, southern, southeast Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama. And this starts to get into Sunday, which is the day we're watching for another round of severe weather, which could uptrend, guys. So we're watching this. But folks up here in the north central U.S., the upper Midwest, you are dealing with some heavy snow. Let's go up here um, to Milwaukee. Um, had a viewer mention there is other cities besides Milwaukee and uh, Wisconsin. And you are correct. There is. So um, I'm not going to take offense to that. But they specifically said to mention Jansville. And Jansville, let me know how much snow you're getting. Madison's another bigger uh, community that certainly is seeing a lot of heavy snow. This is very heavy snow falling in this region up here. Uh, trying to get this in motion. Let's see. Heavy snow. Very, very heavy snow. Heavy, wet snow falling in this entire region right here, all the way up to Green Bay, um, all the way down here to Milwaukee, um, West Bend, Beaver Dam, Oshkosh, Appleton. I'm sure I didn't pronounce that right, but I'm sure you all let me know. It's, it's pouring snow in Madison right now. It looks like there's a break in Janville, Jansville where uh, it was snowing pretty good. But um, we're snowing in the northern suburbs of Chicago. We'll see if y'all get any wraparound snow today. But the snow will continue throughout the morning hours. And I think by the time we get into early this afternoon, you might end with some flakes in Chicago coming down pretty hard in northern Michigan and even areas of the eastern UP of Michigan. And uh, well, I think we'll leave the pitcher in Wisconsin as we get into later this afternoon. A last little push of snow in Wisconsin. We'll move in and then we'll watch some activity that might move into the morning hours in Iowa and northern Illinois. It might bring some wet snowflakes for this area. But snow, <clears throat> guys, some of this has already fell. Uh, let me know how much has already fell. Um, so take a few inches of snow off this. Okay, but, you know, let me know how much snow you guys have seen in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. But uh, northern Michigan, this is just getting cranked up. Some heavy, wet snow. Somebody might get a foot of snow for you guys in northern Michigan. Um, temperatures today, warm across the south. And, you know, a lot of times with these severe weather threats, you have a big sweeping cold front. But this is stalling out. So that means that you still get surface heating you're still warming up because this cold front really wasn't a powerful cold front it wasn't sweeping through the entire southeast so you're warming up pretty good into the 70s and 80s um so the cleanup is on in mississippi and you're going to have some some pretty nice weather for it so it's kind of the silver lining with it but um <clears throat> but uh 70s and 80s for the southeast very warm in florida cold in the ohio valley um, Midwest, though, I mean, 40s and 50s, not too bad. Chilly day in the Northeast. Um, talking about tomorrow, there is a slight risk of severe storms. So it starts again. This is a long, relatively skinny area, stretching from a very small section of Texas all the way to a very small section of South Carolina. There is a tornado risk with this. A 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in a given location, which includes a lot of areas of the Deep South again. Okay, and I'll be honest, the latest HRRR model is, uh, I wouldn't use the word worrisome, but it certainly has that look to it. So um, we'll see if this uptrends. As of now, there's a 5% risk, damaging winds, 15% risk, and hell, a 15% risk within 25 miles in any given location. And we'll start off Sunday morning. And I mean, as early as 5 a.m., you already got a lot of storms ongoing south of Birmingham into the uh, Montgomery area. And then these quickly become widespread. And, and I wouldn't ignore the flooding threat down here, too, because these storms are going to have more of a zonal flow to them, meaning they'll be working west to east. And uh, they will be going over some of the same areas. We'll get into about 9, 10 a.m. Storms continue. And just south of this boundary that the storms are ongoing on, I'm talking about these areas right into here, you could have enough ingredients building into these storms to produce severe storms and a quick tornado. Okay, 
I mean, it already has that kind of kidney bean look to it where it's kind of hooking with these storms. So please don't ignore this threat. And, uh, you know, you're getting into about 6 p.m. And unfortunately, you got nasty weather moving through these areas. It got hit by the tornado last night. But I really think this is going to stay really confined to the deep south, um, almost bordering the Gulf Coast line. But, I mean, look at these look at these supercells trying to form in southern Mississippi and Alabama. So please be aware of this uh, tomorrow. Really, 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 really do, guys, because this this could be – I'm not going to compare it to Friday night, but – this could uptrend to an enhanced risk. I could certainly see that happening. Let's hope not, but we'll talk more on this tonight for sure. But I can tell you, you can see this well. These are dew points. Look how uh, the dew points rise into the 60s and 70s as we're getting into uh, tonight and then into tomorrow. You can tell where the boundary is as we're around tomorrow late afternoon. Dry air up here, more stable air. Moist air down here, more unstable air. With dew points are in the 60s and 70s, so you're, you're you're definitely having the ingredients remain south of this stalled cold front, which is sitting right into here. So there'll be a huge difference for Huntsville, Alabama, than Montgomery, Alabama, uh, for tomorrow afternoon as far as atmosphere wise. So that's all I got, guys. Um, I'm gonna look for some links. Um, if anything pops up, definitely post in the comments uh, some things that you know maybe some folks can donate to and we can help with. Um, but God bless all y'all. Praying for everybody impacted. I really am, guys. Uh, and uh, you guys have a great day. God bless.